So I think that's a great, great uh, example of just what we're hoping for in these services this, uh, this morning. So thank you, Lynn. And what better time to go back to scripture and to hear from Irene Critchley as she brings us our Bible reading this morning from Acts chapter two. Thanks, Irene. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and to the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Irene. I was explaining uh, at the nine o'clock service, whoever gets the Pentecost reading, my goodness me, they're doing well. And John read at nine o'clock, so well done to the Critchleys for uh, tackling one of the most difficult passages in the Bible. As Irene was reading that, it just struck me, because I said this at the nine o'clock, it was nine o'clock when we were in church this morning. It's 10 past 11 now. Are we expecting the Holy Spirit to speak to us in the next few minutes? Because I really hope that we are. So as I pray, let's put our hands out and be expectant to receive what he is going to speak to each of us about this morning. I know what I've prepared, but I pray that he's going to do a whole new thing as I speak. So Holy Spirit, thank you that you are present with us in our homes and as we heard on Lectio 365 from the Archbishop of Canterbury, 
The Holy Spirit fell in people's homes and in their hearts. So I pray for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit in each of the lounges and kitchens and bedrooms and houses that we are in today. And I pray that you would anoint my lips now. You know what I've prepared, but Holy Spirit, if there's something else to come out of this, I pray that you will help me to be obedient to your word. For we ask it in your name. Amen. Thanks, Pete. Okay, so what I hear you ask has last Sunday's goal uh, by Liverpool goalkeeper Alison Becker in the 95th minute with West Brom uh, basically got to do with Pentecost. You would think I am a huge Liverpool supporter. As I've just said to David Parry before we came on air, I haven't got a clue. All I knew that had happened was that Kean was having an almost heart attack in the other room, screaming at the telly, and I knew something big had happened so don't for one minute be fooled that you think that I'm a big football fan but what I did think was as I watched that goal that I knew it was going to form part of my talk today what that goal shows us firstly is a wonderful visual illustration of what celebration looks like I wonder we've really forgotten what celebration feels like or looks like in the pandemic and, and quite rightly so we've been stuck in our homes but we are starting to understand a bit more a celebration what was the buzz like on that pitch well you could see the liverpool teammates and the physios and the coaches all hugging one another and jumping up and down they embraced with a, a great passion saying, well done, that was a great goal. They just witnessed something very spectacular right before their eyes, maybe something that they didn't actually believe could happen. The other reason why I chose this clip was to highlight what Becker did after the goal. And some of you may be aware that Alison Becker is a Christian and he's used the short interview with Sky Sports later on as an opportunity to publicly acknowledge where his strength came from, and that was his relationship with God. He started by commenting that he felt as though God had touched his head to allow the goal. Now, we may or may not believe that, but what I think it then empowered him to do was give a very emotional interview in which actually the comment, the uh, guy interviewing said it was one of the best interviews he'd ever heard. But he spoke of the recent death of his father in Brazil to COVID. And of course, we know that uh, Alison couldn't get back to be with his father. He spoke of the unwavering support that managers and teams and fans across the world had sent him letters of support. And he said this, it helped me to feel God's love. And now I quote him, this is the way God loves us through people. And we say we should do that every time, every day. But I just want to say thank you for this moment and the celebration Football is my life. I have played since I remember as human being with my father. I hope he was here to sit and see it, but I'm sure that he's seeing it with God on his side and celebrating. Witnessing Becker head that ball into the goal, the celebration and elation of all the players, and then hearing Becker use the interview to proclaim his love of God, made me ask a question. Why don't we see more people who believe in and love the Lord Jesus do this? Are we as a church, as the body of Christ, celebrating the good news of Jesus and telling others about it? Of course, the elation on the pitch last Sunday would have been nothing to the miraculous supernatural events at Pentecost that drove those early disciples out and gave them the courage to proclaim the truth about Jesus Christ. As we've just heard in our reading in Acts, the spirit emboldened the apostle Peter to preach to a bewildered crowd of skeptics and drew 3,000 converts to the fledgling faith in one day. 
And on that day, the Holy Spirit breathed life into the church. By any stretch of the imagination, the account of Pentecost is a fabulous story. It's full of riveting details. It's certainly got big words. There's tongues of fire, there's rushing winds, there's accusations of drunkenness, there's even mass baptism. But it's easy to get lost in the noise and the spectacle of the event. But here's the detail that really stands out for me and the detail that I felt the Holy Spirit was wanting me to proclaim today. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. All of them means the Holy Spirit fell on the young, the old, the men, the women, the people of different races and creeds and backgrounds. The Holy Spirit filled their hearts with love and enabled them to complete God's mission. The Holy Spirit didn't just fall on the extroverts like me, the ones who maybe are able to feel that they can share the good news, or maybe the ones who feel like they've got all their lives sorted. No, the Holy Spirit fell on everyone. And I wonder what it would have been like to have been witnessing that amazing event. We read in Acts verse six, sorry, chapter two, verse six. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. It's easy right now to feel bewildered like those early disciples. We're not sure of the roadmap ahead. We know that everyone's lives have changed because of COVID. But one thing we do know is that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same Holy Spirit that came and filled those early followers of the way is the same Holy Spirit that this morning wants to encourage us to speak our faith afresh, speaking truth and hope in our community, in the places that we live and in our workplaces. And how do we do this? Well, firstly, we need to understand for ourselves that God through his son Jesus opened up his arms of love for each and every one of us on the cross. He took our guilt, he took our shame and offered us a way of forgiveness, a way to relate to God. And if we're able to grasp that concept of God's unconditional love for each and every one of us, not just with our head, but with our hearts and translate this amazing message to the world, then the Holy Spirit will equip us to do that. We see at Pentecost that God wants to use everybody to translate his message of hope. He wants to use me, but he especially wants to use you. He wants you to come as you are, hence why I put that poster behind my head, because I know many people look at what behind, is behind my head. I hope they're also listening to what I'm saying, but people comment, oh, I like that poster or that picture behind your head on Zoom. Well, I already had this poster made many months ago. Come as you are. He just wants us to come as we are this morning with our weaknesses. If we're afraid of speaking to others or about our faith, he wants to equip us with his Holy Spirit. As Jeff said, today we're thinking about the spiritual rhythm of celebration and celebrating the wonderful diversity that those early Christians experienced at Pentecost. All those big difficult words that Irene has just had to read just sums up the diversity of the, how the Holy Spirit fell on so many different people. But I was wondering this week, if the church has actually lost some of its diversity, its passion to translate and share with others who are looking on and feeling bewildered, have we been too comfortable um, and just too structured as a church? Because really when we think about our lives, they're often messy. Sometimes they feel very uncomfortable. And I wonder, have we been too content to box God in, to make him domesticated and tame, rather than acknowledging his power that comes to transform and change? I wonder if we've been willing to hide behind our weaknesses and fears. And when I speak, I include myself in this. Rather than allowing ourselves, just as we are, to say, come Holy Spirit, fill me and equip me to just speak for you. 
perhaps this morning we're feeling stuck. Our faith has been shaken maybe in the pandemic. We've had doubts. We're feeling bewildered ourselves. Well, this Pentecost Sunday, I sense that the Holy Spirit wants to fill us afresh with his power and authority to equip us to help shape the culture we live in and speak a language that the non-church can understand. To have the courage to open our mouths and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us. If we truly believe what we've just read, we're claiming that the Holy Spirit actually keeps on fanning the flames of our faith keeps on sending us ideas and experiences that allow us and our relationship with, with, sorry, our relationship with God to keep on growing and expanding as we mature. Faith in God comes from God and is sustained by God. It may not make logical sense, but then again, maybe it doesn't have to. The creation and nurturing of faith is God's work, not ours. We have a very limited scope of what is possible and that perception is rooted in very finite view of what we know or think we know. The Holy Spirit, like the wind, goes unseen everywhere and does all kinds of remarkable work regardless of whether we understand it or not. We may not understand what happened on that very first day of Pentecost or what it has to do with us today, but maybe we don't have to. We know the Holy Spirit is at work in us and among us. Though Peter tries to explain what happened when he and the others were filled with the Holy Spirit on that first Pentecost, even the disciples couldn't comprehend it. They simply participated in God's larger and more inclusive vision of the world as the Spirit gave them ability. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is doing that again. I believe that without our understanding, the Holy Spirit is blowing through this community. I believe the Holy Spirit is working through ordinary people again to fulfill God's mission in the world. And it might sound completely mad and it might be daunting. All we are told and maybe all we need to know is that we are called to share the truth that is in us. We are sent to spread the word that God is a loving God, a uniting God a strong God. That's all the disciples had also to do on the first day of Pentecost. And God worked through them. Because because God loves the world, we can trust that the Holy Spirit will change our fumbling words into an intelligible and helpful message to others. Or maybe the Holy Spirit doesn't change our words at all, but instead changes the ears of those who are hearing, moving them to listen and to comprehend beyond our own capacity to speak. Or maybe the Holy Spirit doesn't change words or ears, but somehow opens the hearts of the people who gather around us so that they are moved to ask questions about God and God's people. It's not our job to comprehend how the Spirit is poured out on the people. It's both our privilege and our calling to speak of God's deeds of power using whatever gifts we have been given by the Holy Spirit. And so this Pentecost, let's ask the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us and to give us courage to speak, not worrying if we have the exact right words or the rehearsed words, but understanding that God loves the person who we are speaking to and wants them to know equally he loves you and me and he will help us to speak. And yes, you know what, we might get it wrong, we might trip up. But as we know, children trip up as they learn to walk and the mothers and their fathers and grandparents help them and pick them up. In the same way, if we trip up as we're trying to speak about the good news of Jesus, be assured that the Holy Spirit will catch us and help us when we do. Friends, this message is far too important to keep it for ourselves. Let's commit today to sharing the good news of Jesus with others. So no matter what football team we support, let's take a leaf out of Alison Becker's book and use every opportunity to position ourselves to share our story, knowing that no experience, either good or bad, is wasted. Let's come as we are and allow the Holy Spirit to equip us and strengthen us.